So this is Yudai Kyofuji. Today I'm going to show you a new configuration format, um, which have said we have said it to adopt in EMQX version 5.0. <clears throat> so this is my pointer cursor. Yes. Yep. Okay. So this is what a configuration file looks like for now in version four. The syntax is similar to sysctl, and it is very simple. And however, we feel this key value format is too verbose and redundant. You know, this part is too verbose. We have to type cluster again and again. <clears throat> so in version five, we adopt Hokom, which supports hierarchical structure. Hokon is a superset of JSON, but, and it's more human readable than JSON. So using Hokon, we managed to continue supporting V4 style, which is shown in left. <clears throat> uh, this is a property-like notation, and, uh, and uh, we also allow human-friendly syntax by those hierarchy. <clears throat> um, These two files are passed into the same object in our long, long time. So as I said, <clears throat> Hokom is a superset of JSON. You can just pass JSON into Hokom parser. This example is a JSON example. And basically, these three files are essentially the same in after passed by Hokon. You do not need quote strings unless it contains special characters like sharp or a question mark. You can either quote the string or just not the string. Hokon also supports substitutions by variable. And we think this could reduce redundancy of configuration files. You can declare the variable name with a um, string value foo. This means uh, cluster.name becomes foo, and node name becomes foo at mark 127001. <clears throat> and when you put question mark um, before the name of variable, the same the field simply vanishes if no substitutions are found uh, rather than raising error. So this raises just error when passing the file. <clears throat> Finally, you can include other files by include syntax. So let's include uh, on the left um, cluster conf from node conf. So you can see, uh, you can use variable from cluster. Okay, you can in, um, use cluster.name variable. Uh, so as if the cluster object is copied from here and pasted here. So we have created Hokon parser in Arlang, so other Arlang developers can benefit as well. So let me show a quick demo on how to use Hokon module. <clears throat> so first we suppose we have a config file like like this node conf and this is uh, fetched from uh, emqx.conf and it <clears throat> so basically we have um, two public api which is uh, binary and load. When you want to read config files like node conf, uh, you can call load API. So here we go, we can um, get the map object representing the config file. And alternatively, you can pass string directly to binary API. So 
for instance, um, you can describe A equal one, and you will get map uh, representing A equal one. And if you pass the nested uh, nested object, you will get nested map. And you can pass some optional parameters. For example, if you want to have a result with prop list, which is one of well-used style in Arlang, um, you can say, just say, um, format is uh, prop lists. So you will get prop list. <clears throat> And you have one more optional format, which is um, rich map. So here we have a um, line number for value one, which is line number is one. Um, for example, if we add the B equal to the line for B is two because we uh, the line breaks here. <clears throat> so, and the file name is of course undefined because it is a binary API. You can use the, uh, rich, you can get rich map in load API too. What is rich map? So this time you can get the file name in metadata line number and the according line numbers. <clears throat> so I believe this the metadata feature is useful when we want to further process the config, uh, for example, uh, validating the value. Um, for instance, uh, if a check if the value is the power of two, and if not, uh, print rich error info with file name and line number. <clears throat> So this is all from my demo. Thank you for listening. Does anyone have any, any questions? Thanks, Yode. Uh, I have a question. Uh, do we have, have an API to uh, verify validate and Hong Kong five, or, or Hong Kong five. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you say? It uh, do we have a have a have an API to uh, verify uh, Hong Kong five? So verify if that is a valid file. A valid. Date. Check if uh, if uh, Hong Kong file is right. Um, not Syn yet. Syntax so check. You you just pass the file to the API and it returns the, the error. It it's a current implementation. Yeah, something like something like uh, Hong Kong uh, validate. It, it sounds nice feature. Uh, the the current I believe the current okay. load uh, or or the binary API they they uh, return or throw exceptions if uh, it's a, it's invalid. It's in, if it's invalid, yeah, you get pass error. Okay, cool. Okay, I see. So there's no extra API, but the the current APIs they can return like uh, informative error. In, uh, error. Okay, it's enough. I see. This, okay, is, cool. uh, this is a great feature uh, with the rich map. And I should also mention that uh, in our uh, EIP, uh, which is uh, 0002, uh, the new configuration syntax for EMTX, uh, the, the uh, improvement proposal, we, have, we, <clears throat> we had a debate on whether or not to go use uh, Hong Kong. Uh, the alternatives were YAML or uh, Tom, uh, Tom L. 
and but in the end we decided to go with Hawcom because uh, it almost a drop-in replacement for the default uh, cuttlefish parser that we are using in EMQX. With Hawcom, we'll, uh, we'll maximize the uh, backward compatibility uh, with, uh, the, uh, for, with version 4. And uh, it also allows us to smoothly evolve, evolve the uh, configuration management system into uh, the next version without a lot of surprises, uh, surprises for the users. All right, uh, if there's not- Yes, I agree. If there's not more questions, uh, let's move on to- uh...